in my instructor courses, we often, when we have a free moment, we talk about like which books should I read. And for me, that's like my top five super pack. I think you really, uh, if I had to make a prescription, those five would be it. This is my favorite spot in the new house. Yeah, on the carpet. I like it. Hello guys and welcome back. No, wait, I gotta put this first. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome back to another episode on the Saga channel. Today, today a little different episode. I'm sitting in front of my bookshelf and uh, I'm going to talk about my top five most influential books that I read uh, before taking a very strange career path and becoming a scuba instructor. I think that's relevant. I think if you're looking into making a, a, an unusual career choice, that it is good to feed your brain with, um, with things that can help you. So let's do it. So guys, the top five most influential books that I, uh, that I read sort of on my way to becoming a scuba instructor, they're not scuba books. So that's, uh, that's not the point. Um, if I can do some shameless self-promotion, I wrote a book, Career in Scuba, How to Become a Dive Instructor and Be Successful. Um, th that's not in my top five of most influential books, of course, although I, I like it because I wrote it. Uh, if you want to pick that up, I'll put a link below and maybe follow the Instagram uh, uh, page because we often do giveaways uh, of that book. I'm not even a very avid reader um, so my top five is just based on books that I picked up and that changed something in me right and the very first one is uh, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Um, that's probably one of the most read books out there next to the Bible I think. Um, it's, it's a work of fiction very simple about a boy who thinks there is this treasure and he leaves everything behind to go and find his treasure. Uh, on the road to finding his treasure he gets uh, robbed, he gets cheated, he meets a bunch of interesting characters and the reason that, um, that the book the Alchemist left some uh, deep impression on me is because that's exactly what people like us go through, right? We start uh, realizing that there must be something out there, there must be more out there and we can't really describe what it is, right? I think everybody's been through that trying to explain to their friends or their families like, hey, I, I just for some reason I feel like I need to become a scuba instructor, I feel like I need to go out there and do this weird thing that isn't obvious and um, yeah, you know what? This is, of all the books in the top five, that's the book that I read pretty much once a year or once every two years. And I, I just, I love it every time again. I actually love it more and more every time I read it. So if you haven't read it yet, The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, um, I, I love it. Actually, all the books by Paolo Coelho, but this one, 100%. Number two, of the, uh, the books that really changed something in me um, was The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. So that's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty well-known book as well and, and it's often cited as sort of one of these career self-improvement books, right? So I think um, I, the, the, the actual contents of the book, I don't know how implementable they really are. Uh, he talks a lot about outsourcing your half of your work to a virtual assistant in India, etc. Um, I don't think, in my case, it's not like I found any golden nuggets about how to organize my life per se in there. But the reason that the four hour work week left such a deep impression on me was because it was maybe the first time that I realized that work can make, can take very different forms, right? Um, we're all brought up with this idea that you get a job, you work for a boss, you do nine to five, five, hour, five days a week, uh, and then you get your paid vacation. And I mean, that's, that's a perfectly fine uh, situation for many people. Uh, I always knew that that really wasn't my thing. And so I think after first reading The Alchemist and finding your own treasure, watching the signs, and then picking up the four hour work week and realizing, you know what? people do kind of break the mold and people do engineer their, their own situations when it comes to their careers. Uh, the four hour work week was just great motivation to start looking for how to do that. 
The third most influential book for me uh, is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Again, that's a pretty known book, I think. A lot of people who are watching this video maybe already read it. Um, but to me, I, you know, it, it all depends on who you are and where you are as a person. But for me, just the, the very simple realization that you are not your thoughts. I thought that was amazing. So be, being able to finally realize that all the things that I'm thinking in my lizard brain, um, that's not me. That's just a little runaway machine. And um, somewhere there's someone in you that's, that's, that has a far deeper sense of uh, self than the thoughts that you conjure up. And I think once you're able to, to realize that and you're able to separate out who you are and who your, what your thoughts are and that your thoughts, that that's not you, I think it becomes a lot easier to also accept that maybe it's okay to have different ambitions and it's okay to just work on your path and try to find what, what's right for you and what sort of life you want. Um, Especially if you ruminate a lot, I used to think a lot. I mean, I still think a lot, but I'm able to now realize that the me that's thinking, that's just one guy, right? And then the, there's the other me who's kind of observing that. So the power of now is a little bit more of a, um, yeah, let's call it a psychological workbook maybe, but uh, for me, did a lot, really liked it. The fourth book that left a big impression on me was Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. Um, I'm a relatively expressive person, but I can be very, very abrasive here and there on this channel. You can maybe also see that. Uh, although nonviolent communication definitely taught me to at least start to try to filter my words a little bit and try to understand also the needs of the person you're communicating to as well as your own needs. So not just reacting to the words that you're being fed by your partner, but actually trying to understand what they're trying to say and trying to um, trying to communicate with them. And when I say partner, I mean conversational partner, not necessarily your, uh, your lover. Um, why I think nonviolent communication is very important uh, on the path to becoming a scuba instructor is also you're, you're trying to work with people, right? You're trying to teach people something. You're trying to negotiate situations with an employee, perhaps. Um, and being able to prioritize what other people are feeling and what their needs are um, can probably help you quite a bit in your teaching situations, right? Um, it's also important, I think, or an important takeaway from that book is that you're not necessarily responsible for other people's feelings, right? So even if you have a communication partner and, and your goal is maybe to try to figure out what they need, um, you're still not responsible for their feelings, but you are responsible for how you react to those feelings. And then my fifth most influential book um, is, <laughs> maybe it's a bit controversial, but it's Becoming Supernatural by Joe Dispenza. Um, I, I, I can already see people like going to the keyboard and being like, that's a bunch of nonsense. Um, there is definitely controversial stuff in becoming supernatural. Uh, you know, people who are sick and cure themselves just through the power of meditation, etc. Um, while I think that that's, if that's your only path to cure yourself, that's definitely a risk you're taking. I do think if you want to just understand more how um, thoughts influence matter, and how thoughts influence reality, um, then becoming supernatural is super interesting. It gets a little, little bit heavy handed, um, but especially the first sort of one third of the book in combination with um, guided meditation, because Joe Dispenza has a bunch of uh, guided meditation that you can get, uh, it definitely unlocks a little bit of extra power in you and I think that's pretty cool if you're um, again if you're maybe living in a situation in a reality that isn't normal or isn't super usual right you're trying to carve out your path to becoming a scuba instructor uh, to working in a career that isn't obvious you can use every bit of help that you can get. And I think there again, you know, learning how to meditate and learning to understand how um, again, your thoughts, right, can influence your reality. Or in other words, 
the power of the mind can influence actual matter. Um, it's, it's a book worth reading. If you haven't yet done so, I recommend it. And especially the combination of the five. In my instructor courses, we often, when we have a free moment, we talk about like which books should I read. And for me, that's like my top five super pack. I think you really, uh, if I had to make a prescription, those five would be it. I realized this was not a scuba diving video per se, so if you're expecting tech dives and instructor training and travel and whale sharks, then this video <laughs> is maybe not the one. But you know what? It doesn't always have to be uh, action-packed. Sometimes uh, it can be just a little bit of food for the soul as well. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.